Well, good Tuesday morning to you. Uh, my name is Michael Landowski. Uh, I was going to do a presentation on my cultural experiences. Uh, I'd like to start out by saying that I was actually uh, raised in a little town called Fortuna. It's in Northern California, just below Eureka, California on the coast. It was primarily uh, dairy and pig farms and you know, logging and fishing industry, blah, blah, blah. Um, However, there was a point when I joined the military and I got sent to Fort Knox, Kentucky, uh, albeit I just got fed what the government decided to feed us at the time, so it wasn't really culturally impacted in that area. Uh, then I was sent to Aberdeen Proving, Ground, Proving Grounds in Maryland for advanced individual training, and there I was able to get weekend passes where I was able to go to uh, Philadelphia. And in Philadelphia, I actually had my first Philly cheesesteak, which is completely different than what you would get if you asked for one here uh, in Oregon. Um, then I went to South Carolina for jump school and again, was just fed what the government decided to feed us. However, once I completed the jump school, I was sent to Fort Polk, Louisiana. I mean, remember, I was raised in a small northern town of California. Um, I didn't actually meet my first uh, colored individual until I was in the Army. Um, then when I was, my time in Fort Polk, Louisiana was definitely a, a culture shock being in what they would consider the Deep South. <clears throat> I remember my mom telling me one time that you can't say you don't like anything if you never tried it. And if you don't like it one time, you need to try it somewhere else. So based on that, for my mom, I remember trying uh, or having, having the ability to try, you know, um, turtle soup, which is made out of uh, snapping turtles, uh, crawfish, snake, alligator, and various other oddities, even possum, which is just really gamey. However, what I realized after being there for three and a half years is that the culture of being in the South, again, you know, we have to remember that slavery was a big thing back you know, back in the 60s and 40s and so on, is that the indigenous population there basically survived off of what they could get, which would be, you know, anything off the land, like the uh, meals that I just mentioned before. Uh, and that was a, a really good learning experience for me. Um, it really opened up my eyes to the variety of people, um, cultures, how they went about you know, preparing foods, uh, how they ate with the family, and so on. Um, it, this is just kind of like a narrative of experiences that I have, that I've experienced, you know, throughout the years. Um, now I live in Medford, Oregon. Um, I'm currently employed with the VA in White City, and I do I get to work with a lot of uh, different residents from different ethnic back, backgrounds. And here we actually try to serve better meals um, regarding authenticity, you know, Hispanic, Caucasian, colored, um, things like that. Uh, but however, I remember one day, I was sitting there, we were serving steaks, and I was, I didn't really think about it, but I started noticing over the years is that the colored population of the VA always asked for well done. And I remember asking a guy that I'm friends with, I'm like, why is that? And he mentioned, because he was an older, you know, Vietnam veteran, and he was from Mississippi, and he said it was because that during the slavery times, <clears throat> all the meat that the, the slaves received was, you know, the bottom of the barrel, it could have been spoiled, so they found that they cooked everything very well done. I'd almost say burnt. And then it clicked. I was like, oh, that's why. You know, I mean, it seems, sounds simple, and when, you, but when you reflect upon it, you realize that people, the poorer class of people, or just families that are struggling, always utilize, and this is with any culture, um, it just depends on where you're, what part of the country you're in, you utilize what you had. It, it's, it's pretty simple, it just came, comes back to survival. You eat everything. <clears throat> um, I got friends of mine, like, I was raised where you just ate the apple, <clears throat> but not the core. Now I have friends that eat the entire core, and, and then I ask them about their background, and they came from very poor families, and that's just the way it was. Uh, I remember also here, um, 
you know, uh, Hispanics, there's different, they're Hispanics, but they were all raised in different parts of Mexico and migrated up here. And some you'll get like uh, enchiladas or whatever, burritos, things like that. And some, you know, which we would, what I think is normally common is not to have any bones or in sinew or anything like that, just the meat. However, <clears throat> once again, the poor population, they threw in everything, the bones and everything. And I found this out when I bit, in, bit into a burrito and bit into a big old piece of bone. And I was like, my first thought was like, oh man, this is freaking nasty. And then upon talking to that individual, it's because when they cook the meat with the bones and everything, they're getting every bit of nutrients that they can. <clears throat> Again, when it's all about survival, um, and our and the different cultures are based off that. Basically, it's just survival. Um, I'm really grateful that my uh, mother installed in that <clears throat> in me that you know you have to try everything twice at two different places. I will say that. Um, oh, what is it? I can't think of what the name of it is right now, but I will as soon as this video is over. But it's pig intestines, fried pig intestines. They're nasty. I don't care. I've tried it three times, actually, at three different places, and they are just freaking nasty. Um, I like to mention, too, that I have, guess I have an iron gullet. Like, I eat everything. Um, and I, too, was raised uh, with a struggling family. So I don't throw any... Uh, away leftovers are like lunch for the next day um, oh yeah one other thing too uh, also here in the United States and I'm gonna go back to like McDonald's Burger King stuff like that when they all started in the early 70s it also that alone had a you know over the years has had a great impact upon our cultural here in the United States uh, families have gotten to the point where both parents work uh, McDonald's or various other entities like that are providing what they call healthy meals where in reality are it has um, torn away at our core of uh, family meals eating at dinner time everybody at the table so on and so forth uh, our also our obesity level in the United States is extremely high um, and has been implicated through the fast of fast foods um, there's a definite rise when you research it you'll see that once McDonald's and Burger King's and so forth got a foothold, the obesity level got higher. Um, and that's unfortunate. Um, right now we're going through the COVID-19 where everybody has to go home. Um, Burger King and, and entities of that nature are still making money, uh, providing us with their so-called healthy meals. However, I really don't think that's going to work out too well. I, the one thing I do think, or I believe that's going to help out is the fact that we are being forced <laughs> to sit at home and have meals with our family again so that might actually be a good thing out of all of this all of the COVID-19 that's going on anyway so there's my presentation like I said it's just the thoughts of the experiences I've experienced or <laughs> my experiences over the last uh, few decades <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much my thought pro processes of that on that at this time. All right, well, hope you enjoy and glad you tuned in.